New World Order, you underestimated the people. You took a gamble and you lost. Okay, we don't like this. Okay, well then we're going to do this. And that is just how it's going to be. Evidence brought to light that there is a corrupt officer or that that officer did shoot that kid on purpose. I don't care how I look, I don't care how I sound, I don't care what the beat is. I just care the message gets across. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is the Tin Man here with Lucid and John Connor. And we're going to give you kind of a behind the scenes. Connor, what the fuck are you calling this thing? Oh, I'm just talking, you know, Worldwide Resistance Network backstage passes. You know, they don't see this shit. They don't see us do this. They don't even pretend that this even happens. <laughs> so, well, what, what, do you, what do you say, Lucid? You know, I know you're doing that thing, you know. You, uh, on the other side of the camera, pulling the whole anonymous thing. What, what's your opinions? Give me uh, something simple that you learned today. As far as what goes? Anything. That's the fun part, man. What did you learn today? It could be personal. It could be professional. It could be conspiratorial. It could be, dude, when I saw this Buddhist guy on the side of the street, and he just made me think something cool. It doesn't matter. What did you learn today? Um, well, I've been kind of fucking around with my music a lot today. So on, on that subject... I learned that with Fruity Loop 7, I can make really tight ass drum beats, but I cannot make loops on Fruity Loop 7. For some reason, dude, it's just crap. So you gotta bust up the programming. You're gonna have to find a way to take the beats that you've created and put them somewhere else so you can utilize them. Yeah, well, I could do that. That's easy. I just make the beat, I export it, and then I put it in a, into my recording program. But um, I need to um, you know, sample loops elsewhere because I can't write samples on that program for some reason. Cool. So are you the, are you the, the musical side of things? Because I saw the new intro, dude, and I don't know who did it. I don't care who did it. I'm happy the fuck that it was done. But there's an amazing flash art and a bunch of stuff, and there's this amazing, amazing musical beat behind it. And that goes for like the intros that are used for me and for Tin Man and for yourself. But then there's also an intro that's found for the weekly report. It's like a double intro. Yeah. Right? Are you responsible for the musical aspects of that? I'm responsible when me when me and uh, Tin Man are on camera. I'm responsible for the music that's playing in the background as it's uh, as it opens and as it closes. But as far as the intros concerned, those were loops that he found that he made for the intros. Yep. Fucking awesome, guys. If, awesome. if you want to know where the second intro came from, that was actually my buddy. From Ring Scoops. When I was working with Ring Scoops, he we started doing this show called Tin Man TV. Nice. And I just changed the last portion of the imp of the intro instead of it saying Tin Man TV, where I'm all gray with a fucking funnel on my head, looking like Tin Man. I fucking changed it up. Nice. Should we? Um, can we be funny about this? Because we're doing, we're, you guys are doing the 9 11 special, right? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to do that on Thursday. Should all should we all be wearing tinfoil hats for that special? <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> that would be hilarious. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm just thinking, right? Because that's the kind of shit, right? They're like, oh, 9 11 conspiracy theorists. Did you even know that they don't even want to call us conspiracy theorists anymore? Really? The whole, yeah, the. And it was brought up on InfoWars, and um, I, I looked into it, and I was like, the fucking guy is right. It was Alex Jones that said it, if I'm not mistaken. And not, I'm not a big AJ buff. Like, I'm not going to sit there and pretend that, like, we take everything from him. We, yeah. we utilize all the information he places forward. We cross-reference with other avenues that we have. Yeah. And uh, we do what we can with what we've got. But he, he said a very, very poignant and important thing, which caught my attention. He said that we can't be called conspiracy theorists anymore. Huh. And, and, he, and he explains it like this. And it's not even his decision. Just If you pay attention to me, we're called 9-11 truthers or something else. But the word theorist is very rarely found in the official spectrum. That doesn't mean some guy on Facebook's not going to call you a conspiracy theorist. That's not my point. Yeah. But on the, on the official spectrum, here's the theory. I have a theory... That if I drop this lighter, it's going to fucking fall. No, Connor, you're full of shit. The shit's going to float. Okay, well, let's figure it out. I'm going to drop this lighter, and we're going to find out whose theory is correct. Oh, shit, it fell. 
The point is that they don't even want to let the 9-11 quote-unquote conspiracy fall or float. They don't even want to prove it right or wrong. They can't touch it. They're afraid of it. Yeah, it's just there. <laughs> it's just there. It's in the fucking ether, man. No one knows what to do with it. It's there. It's becoming exactly what they wanted it to become. It's becoming a piece of that black void in space that nobody cares about. Yep. Because they don't want to test it. You know, how the fuck do two towers fall at, what is it, like two seconds or point two seconds away from free fall speed? You can't, you can't accomplish that without... I'm sorry, I took my, I, I'm sorry, I took my finger out of the dike. I dropped the ball on that one. I took my finger out of the dike and everything fell apart. I told you, don't do that shit, man. I try to tell you, you pull your finger out of that goddamn dike, man, she's gonna fucking squeal to the point towers are gonna fall. Oh, yeah. Right? We, we, we've had enough of that. Lucy can tell you we're not gonna say any names. And then I'm sitting there on the webcam fucking talking to this chick. Take your hand off your cock! Only if you let it be put in your pussy. But there's a camera in the middle, so you're just gonna have to look at my hand on my cock, bitch. You're gonna have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, uh, but anyway, <clears throat> Mr. Giggles' segments are, they're awesome, dude. I love it. We went from Mr. Giggles' sex ed to Mr. Giggles' music class. It's perfect. Yep. And then, it, and then, you know, one of these episodes will go on his uh, his uh, recommendation for food or his recommendation for clothing, you know, fashion statements, stuff like that. You know, just random fucking strategy. pieces Make of bullshit. Cut down a tree. YRV's explosive technology. Yeah. Oh, that, there you go. There you go. We'll, RTV. We'll strap, like, we'll, 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 strap, we'll strap like a thousand RTVs to a tree and we'll blow the tree up. And we'll call it Mr. Giggles' Environmental Science. <laughs> <laughs> I just did a flint bomb. <laughs> nice. I lit up I lit up a flint from a from a lighter and I slammed it on the ground and it went crazy. Oh man, it made wire be nervous, dude. I was, I'm surprised the like fucking alphabet agencies haven't been at your door yet. <laughs> I, I'm like legit, legit surprised. He's that kind of a person. I expected it to be like that. I was like, I watched it, right? And like you guys you guys did the flint bomb and I was like, you didn't just do that. <laughs> of course we like, did. I was like, oh, but no, nobody, nobody chimed in. No, see, that's the funny thing, right? They, they just, they fuck with us. There's always one guy, man. He comes in and, and like, I, oh man, I want to ban him, but I don't want to ban him because I want the Worldwide Resistance Network to give him the Troll of the Year award. <laughs> I know he he deserves it. You know, I, I don't like talking about this guy. And you know, we discussed this in the past. You know, we're just gonna, we're not gonna fucking feed them and give them any free promotion but god damn it it's just so fun to talk about dude his perseverance man if i if i could take his perseverance to make him do something of virtue like do you know what kind of intelligent person is required to follow absolutely everything that we say which is on every spectrum so you have to have a little bit of know-how yeah. and then to come out with an anti version of that in less than 10 words yeah it's like, like there's a particular level of intelligence involved there. Yeah, it's like we got this other troll who freaking comments on every fucking video. It's always got a negative comment. It's like, oh, this video is shit or this or that. It's like, well, you've been saying that for this past six months, but you know what? You're still here. You're still commenting. And you know the motherfucker subscribed. Oh, you, you know, know he, the comments come in like in like hours, hours of posting. Oh, yeah, they're probably sitting there at their computers jacking off going, is he going to post another video? Is he going to post another video? No, 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 let's, let's be a little bit more human about it. He's watching <laughs> this chick fuck a dog, and he's pulling his monkey, and the separate tab says, ding, 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 the worldwide resistance, and he lets his cock go. That's how important this is. <laughs> Motherfucker lets his cock go, comes up into the new window, and bashes our videos. <laughs> if it was me, I just fucking you know I jizz all over the fucking place, and then I'd come and talk with sticky fingers. <laughs> he just lets his cock go, and then he comes and puts in a comment for like, "Dude, you have now placed me above sexual gratification." 
That is awesome. <laughs> God, I wish we had the video on this. I can only do audio with the program that I'm using. Cause yeah, yeah. You can do screenshot. Yeah, screenshot makes it clippy, dude. Oh, but what? like I, I, I could be like slow. I could be like here, and then here, and then here, and then here, and then he lets it go. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you got to get back on camera, my friend. I need the people want to see you. That That's a given. When you disappear, everybody's coming to me. Where the fuck is Connor? Where the fuck is Connor? Shit, fuck him. If I know, I'm not his fucking babysitter. I, I feel like Cain from the Old Testament. It's like, where's your brother? I'm my brother's keeper. Am, am, I my, am I Connor's keeper? I don't pay his salary. He'll turn on the camera when he believes it's right. Yeah. But that's, that's a bunch of bullshit, though, too, because it's all wrong. It Nothing is. about it is right. Uh, so we got this whole 9-11 thing going. We got we got to spread the truth. We got to do so with a particular level of tact, intelligence, respect. Because like, like Lucid man, how many how many soldiers did we lose on this fake war on terror? You should've, know, like too many. Out. Too many is already yeah, the many. answer, but one is thousands. one too many. Yeah, but we're talking thousands, if I'm not mistaken, right? Like, we lost a lot of fucking boys both Hundreds sides of, of the border. Tens of thousands. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying, right? Like, so, because this is what I was telling Tin Man earlier, right? I was like, you know, it's 13 years after the fact, right? So that means that the 13-year-old young man or young woman who lost their parents on that day is now 26 years old. That means that five-year-old that lost that day is now 18 years old yeah. that's who, that's who we need and and i said it because uh, we're reporting it now and i'm going to say it and and i mean no disrespect to the american people to the american soldiers or anything like that it's merely logistics i'm just looking at this shit, right okay so let's say the person that was 40 years old and saw that happen right yeah well well grandma Grandma watched the towers fall. Grandma didn't see the nukes fall. Grandma's good with that. She's okay now. Dude. She can sleep easy. She can go into the woods and die tomorrow morning, and she's okay. Dude, you that is evil, okay? <laughs> it's so evil. I, I love you to death, bro. You're my brother. I love you. But God fucking damn it. Well, that's what I'm saying, right? So... The, per, the flying on. spaghetti monster. Your purple flying spaghetti monster oh. is going to give you 20 lashes. Speaking of purple flying spaghetti monster, just want to touch on something real quick. I saw a meme on Facebook. It, it wasn't a meme more than anything. It was... Uh, um, no, it covered anyway. My back is there. Sorry, I'm talking to my girlfriend. It's all good. She was afraid to sit beside me because she thought I was going to record in. So I'm just going to turn the camera a bit so she can sit comfortably. Okay. Okay. Anyway, keep going. Anyway, um, I saw on Facebook, uh, I don't remember if it was today or yesterday, but um, this lady in Illinois, she took a, a picture for her driver's license, and she was wearing a colander, uh, a, a spaghetti strainer. And she stated, she said, Religious beliefs. Yeah, religious beliefs, because she is part of the church of the flying spaghetti monster, and mm -hmm. that and that it's her free and she's she's happy that she was able to take that picture on her driver's license because she is part of that religious belief and that she um, is happy to be able to exercise her rights. Okay, what well, what is the church of the flying spaghetti monster believe in? I gotta know this. You gotta look into it, dude. I don't even know. I just know that it exists. I, I thought it was just a fucking meme, dude. I honestly thought it was just a meme. No, no, that shit is is as as real as cancer, man. It really exists. Just like uh, the Jedi Order, that was that was labeled a cult for many, many, many years, and something like ten years ago, maybe five. No, it was more than five years. Ago. About ten. Years. I'll say ten just to be safe. It could have been a little less, a little more. <clears throat> it was finally recognized by the governments of the world as a religion and people exercising their religious rights and religious freedoms like that dude something as simple as putting a colander on your head for your driver's license that's exercising religious rights and religious freedoms mm -hmm. that's the proper use of the power right yeah. 
imagine the protester that is on the side of the road holding a sign that says anti-Zionism or anti-Rothschild or anti-1% or pro-Anon or pro-TWWRM. What would happen if we could protect those people under their religious freedoms? You can fuck with people's civil liberties. If you pay very close attention, you can fuck with people's civil liberties. Do not fuck with people's religious beliefs. Nope. Yeah, but then that would label us a religion, and, I mean, is that really what we're about? It's not. That's like, you see, in my, in, in my mind's eye, if everything was perfect and I could do it the way that I would want to do it, the Worldwide Resistance Network would be a political party, a religious faction, as well as a corporation. And then I realized that's the definition of fascism, so I had to find a new way. Right. <clears throat> but when I realized that, because that, that's what you want. You want people that will live the resistance-minded life. They will, they will do what they can for others when they can. They will take care of themselves and their own, and they won't hurt people. That's the way of life. That's the religious aspect of things. And then you've got the, the business and the commerce, and, and, and Christianity has tried to do that, you know? Be honest with your fellow man, you know? Don't fuck people over. Christianity failed, and people are getting fucked over. It happens. And then you've got, like, the political spectrum. They put their hands on the Bible, and they swear to God, and so, yeah, 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 they will uphold and protect. And so you've got politicians believing the See, same way. I, I don't... I don't. I don't understand how they could do that legally to make you tell the truth and whatnot. Because first off, not everybody's a believer in Christ, and some to some the Bible is just a fucking book. And then secondly, there's separation supposedly of church and state. So how can you, in a court of law, swear on the Bible to tell the truth if you don't believe, or if there's separation of church and state? Only those who fully understand the nature of the law. Like, like, and I mean, like, deep, 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 hit, hit lo the history of law. That every law that me and you abide to today, regardless of country, and, and it's really fucked up because I, because you're a, you're, you're a, a, a good God fearing Christian person, regardless of sect that you choose to apply to. Right. Um, the Ten Commandments. Uh huh. You, you, you know them. You don't have to know them, but you know they exist. Right. 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 If you actually look at at any law. Right? It, stature, subsection, yada, 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 letters, numbers, all the bullshit, right? Right. Every law that is in the law book can be brought back to one of the ten in one way, shape, or form. It's the human creature being an idiot and, and defining shit that doesn't have to be defined. You know, well, it's, thou it's, shalt no, not steal. It, it's, not even, it's not even about being an idiot. It's about people trying to manipulate the system and do stupid shit. Exactly. So they're, they're trying to ceiling loopholes. Yeah, creating silly loopholes wherever they might be. But the biggest laws that are available today can be traced back to the Big Ten. Right. And hence the whole thing that Jesus said, you'd rather abide by, by my laws than the laws that shall be imposed upon you. You'd rather abide by the Ten Commandments today than abide by any law that is recognized in the judicial system today. The but, judicial system. but on the other hand, too, Jesus also said, um, obey the laws of the land as you would my father. Exactly. And, and the fucked up thing is that the laws that me and you are forced to, to, to adhere to are maritime admiralty. They're not even laws of the land. Right. Yep. That's how deep it goes, right? Like, So at the very end of all of this bullshit is that all the laws that are found in our law books today are a derivative of the Big Ten. Why is that important to know? Just know this because you know this. Then when you enter a courtroom and they say, do you want to give a solemn oath or do you want to swear on the Bible? Now only the learned know this part about the law. If you swear on the Bible, you're entitled to use the laws found within the Bible to defend yourself. Hmm. So the books of Judges, and the books of Acts, and even everything Jesus said, all the way down to the book of Genesis. And I got, because this is what the judge told me when I got, because I grew dope. You knew that, Lucy, right? There's no secrets? Right. Okay, I just making sure. I robbed the store and I grew dope. Those are the only two criminal charges you'll ever find on me. If you were to look for me, I, I've done a bunch of shit. Nothing dirty, nothing nasty. I, I've never hurt a child. I've never heard of, you know, things like that. But, you know, I've robbed people. I've done what I've got to do to survive. But on record, you have a grow up and, and a, an organized theft under 5,000. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So when I was in court for the weed, I looked at the judge 
And I said, as soon as you prosecute the big man upstairs, I'll be his cellmate, guarantee you. Because he created all of the herbs and all of the everything, looked upon it and said that it was good. First book of Genesis. So I explained that to the judge. And you're, if you swear on the Bible, you're entitled to use the Bible to defend yourself. Religious rights and freedoms. So it gets fucked up. Imagine if you could defend yourself against a judge, uh, defend yourself against a judge with a colander. Right. <laughs> right. It's that kind of shit that's at play. So you know what the judge told me? Huh. He said, "He says, Mr. Dwaron, your crime was not growing marijuana. Now, in my province, you're not allowed to grow dope. It's impossible. You're not supposed to do that. Right. But your crime was not growing marijuana. He busted it down, just like I busted it down." He says, your crime was growing marijuana in the province without a permit. Mm. And for that, I will give you six months in jail, opposed to the two years that they wanted to give me. All right. Wow. So, yeah. It's, so if you swear on the Bible in a court of law, you're entitled to use the Bible as a defense tool. Most atheists don't even know the Bible. Most of them give solemn oaths. There's a 3,000 page document in front of the judge that if you just grab it and read it, you can defend yourself with it. And in the court of law, it stands. And that's what they don't know. Right. Just like, just like that's what makes us, both Canada and the United States, that's what makes us Christian nation. Huh. In, in Iran, you can pull the Quran to protect you. You swear on the Quran. You swear to Allah. You da 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 da. Yeah, pack the fucking. There's no weed. You guys are fucked up if there's no weed left. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, that's the thing. Regard. That's why you hear Christian nation, Islamic nation, Israel, the Jewish nation. I'm not saying Jews can't have a nation. I'm just saying that in their Bible it says they're not supposed to have one. Yeah. So we should look into it. Um, it's not my God that says they can't. It's not even the Islamic God that says they can't. It's not even Scientology that says that they can't. It's, it's the their the own people. writings. Yep. It's found in the Torah. And it's, you know, and then you got to get into the Talmud, right? Most people know about the Torah. A good God fearing Jewish person would have told you of the Torah and would have encouraged you to read it. Yeah. Not one Zionist will bring you a copy of the Talmud. Not like the Mormons do with the Book of Mormon. Dude, they will kick your door down. Be like, I've got this book, man. you got to look into it. Right? The Zionists won't do that to us with the Talmud. Nope. You know? So that's the shit. And anyway, it's fucked up, man. Just like death to Israel. Like, that's all I can say. Like, as soon as Iran nukes them, we're good. We don't have to go to war. We just could sit back, grow your crops, don't worry about it. Yep. GMO, the other side of the world if you want to. But when Iran actually fucking nukes Israel, it's all good. The Jewish people are found in every country, on every continent, all over the world. Yep, it's because they're they, scattered. They're scattered, and they are great stewards to their nation. They do the very best. To help progress every nation that they're in. We won't pretend that they don't. There are good people all over the world that are doing everything they can to A, teach us about Zionism, and B, teach us how to not, you know, create the next Holocaust. Like, that's, that's all they're all about. You know, don't kill each other for a religion. That shit don't work. Trust me, we tried. That's what the Jewish people are telling us. Yeah. The human race has tried to kill people over religion. Don't do it. Not worth it. More money to be made in peace, I swear. Grow those crops, sell that food over there. Yeah, I can tell them there's no money to be made in peace. Exactly. Right? Like Canada, yeah, send your send your water to Afghanistan. It's good. Don't worry about it. Just send it there. They need it. They're gonna pay you. Not a lot, but they'll pay you. Alright, cool. There's more money to be made in peace. Always. And I think I don't know who said it. Was it I don't know if it was fucking Kennedy that said it. It's one of your guys' presidents that said it. Okay, well, what that did it, he say? He, he said something along the lines of, look at us now where we have more commerce and more money and more uh, a stronger economy 
in our times of peace as we sell and import and help others to import their goods, opposed to what we have done when we've tried to destroy each other. I think it was Kennedy, but that's not what he said. That's the context of what he said. There's, there's far more better and intelligent words used in the speech, but that's what I walked away from the speech with. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, that is a pretty good 9-11 discussion. Uh, what, what we haven't touched on yet is the new potential terrorist threats, all these rumored terrorist threats. What do you think about that, Connor? Well, the, it's a stepping stone. These, these rumored new terrorist threats, it's a stepping stone. 9-11 was the big one. That was the lie. They, they, they pegged it on terrorists. And you know what? The person that were involved in this, they were terrorists. They actively decided to throw planes into towers. But we're, we're declaring that it was the Islamic nation because this passport didn't burn up. That, so there's where the lie was found. Whoever put the planes in the towers, they were a terrorist. They, that's just the truth. They blew fucking towers up with 3,000 people in it. They terrorized two, three nations on this continent with that action. So whoever did it was a terrorist. I'm not going to sit there and say that they worked. I'm just saying that the people that me and you and everybody are, are being told are the terrorists, that is where the lie is found. So I'm not saying 9-11 is not a terrorist act. So that was the big one. There was a lie that came about it, but that was the big one. Now we got these intermediate terrorists and terrorist organizations of sorts. I have a question. Shoot. How were these terrorists able to take over the these airplanes with fucking box cutters? You hoop them. <clears throat> you, you take them. Um, do you know what hooping means? No. Okay. Um... <clears throat> See, this is the shit, right? Like, history is blurring simple lines. There was not a whole lot of metal detectors before he got on a plane until 9-11. Right, no, I saying, get that. I'm not saying that it didn't exist. I'm just saying that there wasn't a lot of them. So you just pick an airport where there isn't any, and you right. win. Right, right. Now, you take, a, you take a box cutter, and only people that have gone to jail know this emotion. It sucks. Just, just putting it out there, okay? You take the box cutter, and you put the blades in it, you lock the blades shut, and you wrap that motherfucker up in some condoms, and you grab a good old trusty Vaseline. Oh, no, I'm not wondering how they got it on the plane. I'm wondering how they used the box cutters to take over a fucking airplane with a locked cockpit. How the uh, fuck is that even possible? Two actions. Fear is always the mitigating aspect of this. Because this is a, a sink or swim mission. You will either succeed or you will fail. It's it's either or, right? Yeah. So it takes it takes two people. So I go on a plane with uh, yourself, Lucid. I grab the stewardess with my box cutter and I slit her throat in front of fucking everybody, right? Okay. Ev everybody sees it. Everybody at this point is now terrified. They are pissing. Half of them have shit themselves and they're looking for toilet paper at this point. Right. And then you, you big badass motherfucker, because you are now twice my size, and you grab another employee and you threaten to kill. And the captain knows that we have already killed. Captain's got to weigh pros and cons. Is there a way that I can open this cabinet door, save lives, overtake the plane before it fucks up? It's a 50-50 split. You, you flip that coin, keep the door closed, all of my passengers are dead. Or all of my passengers overtake the problem and I land the plane safely. Well, That's then that, side A. That, that would be the best side right there. All you got to say is, passengers, we lost. everybody... We lost. Everybody fucking, uh, you know, attack the fuck out of every uh, everybody who's holding a weapon and detain them. I will be landing the plane safely at the next airport. Right. See, yeah. Let's see. This, see, now me and you, both of us, we're victim of, of a simple thing. Hindsight's always twenty twenty. Because we know what happened, we could always give a better scenario, a better solution as to how it went down. I'm sorry, but I wouldn't open that fucking door if it was my life or somebody else's life, and I hate to say it this way, and I was a, I was an untrained, straight-up just jet pilot or whatever, 
and I, I have no training whatsoever. I don't know how to fight people. A box cutter scares the shit out of me. I don't want to die. I would just leave those fucking doors closed. It would be my life over theirs. And that's just how it is. It's it's yep. human nature to want to survive and to live. Why would they open the doors? Maybe the fucking pilots were in on it. <clears throat> yeah, there's oh. a lot. There's a lot of Hardcore. shit that doesn't make sense. But see, now we also have uh, again history creating that blurred line. We're talking about locked cockpit doors, right? Yeah. I remember as a child. I was only nine years old, uh, no, 12 years old, sorry, and I, my, my parents are separated, and I went to live with my dad. I had to get on a plane to do this, and, and I remember this as clear as day, maybe because it's important at this, in this conversation, but I've always remembered this. I was allowed to sit in the cockpit. None of that is relevant. The stewardess brought me to the cockpit to sit with the pilots to see how pilots are, and I'm looking out of the big fucking windows and shit is awesome. But what I remember most is that it was the stewardess that opened that door and not the pilots. So we have to ask ourselves, are locked cockpit pre or post 9-11? Yeah, I guess so. That's but so what, if, what, if they, what if it wasn't locked and they forced themselves in? Like... This is where people, and we're, we're all victim to this, man. We got to talk to some engineers. We got to talk to American Airlines. We got to find 1999's flight procedure. Is the cockpit door locked in 1999? And uh, unlocked, sorry, in 1999, and then locked 2002. Because that, that little teeny, teeny tiny piece of information unlocks spectrums of information. Right. Because if the cockpit is locked pre-9-11, which seems like it would be a, a, a pretty basic fucking thing, like it would be that way because of the fact that just because there were no terrorists back in those days, dude, doesn't mean that there wasn't people wanting money to hijack a plane for money. That's right. No terrorists so. doesn't mean no security protocol. Right. Exactly. But... So we got a lot of shit, just, just that, that's just how they get in. But dude, I've seen one video on YouTube and I've never seen it again. And it was the weirdest thing ever. Huh. It was a person sitting in some sort of a fucking cart, like a, a I don't know, those, those cable cars or whatever. And they just so happened to have a video camera and they were zooming in on the pilot just for fun. It turned out that the pilot of that plane was a white, it was a Caucasian female. Later in life, we find out that plane hit the two towers. Huh. So we can go like, do and we got to be very careful with this because the way the international scene is, the United States and Russia, they're not really fucking buddy buddy. Not to begin with. <clears throat> Haven't been for for at least a year almost since this Ukrainian nonsense started. Well, even before that, fucking Snowden takes this island in Russia. Who well, protects the better, it? The Obama, better way of doing things. Obama right? throws a temper tantrum. So did Stephen Harper. So in my country, the same thing. We've ceased all activity with Russians. And we used to have their soldiers here training and a bunch of shit. And we sent them all the way. And don't come into our airspace because we're not friendly anymore. All because Obama said it was a good idea. Yeah, well, I, <laughs> that, that's what you guys get for listening to Obama. <laughs> That's all I got to say. <laughs> That's what you guys get for voting to me. I didn't vote those <laughs> those last two terms. I don't know if you remember the last video, but I said that. I hadn't voted yeah. the last two terms because of that. Diehard Republican. <clears throat> well, not diehard. You, at this point, you'd just rather an American lead. Yeah. Seriously. I mean, I'm sick of un-Americans running this fucking bitch. You know, I want... I, I don't care if it's red or blue at this point. I just want somebody that's red, white, and blue. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, we, we, we should make the stars black, you know, just because. But, like, dude, what? I'm not negating that there's not no black people in New Jersey that have been born and raised. they got to be better than Obama. Right. Oh, yeah. Right? But, like, this Kenya, this whole thing, man. And, and this is the funny part, though. This is where it gets interesting. It'll be the last time that that kind of argument or debate will ever be presentable at all, although it hasn't been presented. It'll be the last time that kind of debate will be presentable. Yeah. If, if Barack Obama was legitimately born in Kenya and 
you know, Muslim, Christian, Jewish, I don't give a flying fuck. He could, you know what, dude? Obama could be a Muslim Zionist. Probably welcome is. To the, welcome to the twist. You know what I mean? Like, it's fucked up. So we got that guy from Kenya, and they're like, no, no, he's not from Kenya. Well, why is his wife saying that he was in Kenya at the birthplace talking to his mom? Like, so she fucked up. Either she was told to say that just to fuck shit up, you know, disinformation is a beautiful thing used in a military tactic. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'd love for people to believe that you live in fucking Tennessee when you live in New Jersey kind of deal. It'd be a great thing to have people yeah. believe. Yeah. Who was that celebrity that died recently? I don't keep up on popular culture and shit like that. What was that celebrity? Joan Rivers. Hey, Joan Rivers. Yeah, she... Oh, I thought you were talking about Robin Williams, man. Well, Robin Williams is kind of old news as opposed to Joan Rivers Joan at this Rivers. point. Yeah, uh, <laughs> not, well, they they said that, you know, they, they tried to tie the conspiracy theory thing to Robin Williams, too. But the, the new conspiracy theory is that Joan Rivers died because she said that Michelle Obama was a transvestite and that Obama was gay. Ooh. Yeah. I never heard. I didn't hear that. Yeah. So let's put it this way, okay? Let's be real about this. Do you care if your president takes it in the ass? Like, on a sexual ramification thing, like, does the fact that he takes it in the ass change the fact that he wants to legalize dope? <laughs> <laughs> like, because that's one thing that me and my girlfriend, we always talk about the most, because we're always worried about that, dude. We're always worried about. The sexual scandal. Because we watched what you guys did to Clinton. You know what I mean? Motherfucker got a blowjob. Couldn't cut a nigga slack to save his life. And he's white as snow. You know what I mean? Like, oh, shit. We just popped off the N-word. Oh, come on. We're not that correct. According to our current... Did we say... Did we say... Did we use the popular vernacular niggard as an ignorant person? Or did we just use the African-American slang? It's like, what's up, nigga? Nigga. What up, nigga? GA. I'm all about the GA. Because it's. Georgia? It, it, yeah, <laughs> well, well, it shows. Um, now, don't go, don't go saying this shit, black people. You kind of need permission. Okay, so don't fuck around with I, I don't. I don't necessarily need permission anymore. I was told by several black people I could use the word n nigger, so. Yeah, at that exactly. particular point, dude, I mean... Yeah, and we're not calling anybody in particular the N-word. Mm -hmm. Dude, we are crazy as fuck. We're talking to the imaginary black man in our head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got one of those, too? Oh, to everybody, you are not sane if you do not have an imaginary black person in your head. <laughs> Mine kind of talks like this. Yeah, oh, my God. Hi, Peter. <laughs> my kind of comes from the South. Oh, like, you know, and oh, it just Hi, Peter. Up. That's nasty. I, I, <laughs> I'm sitting here. I'm watching some crazy ass movie where some African Americans. I, I, I want to be respectful here because we're talking about legitimate slave time. An African American uh, is happens to be a slave at the time. Moves up the ranks because apparently there's ranks in slavery. I just thought you just did what you told, but there's ranks in slavery. He moves up the ranks and he finds out that he happens to be one of these guys that's serving people in the White House. That's as far as I am in the movie. Apparently, this guy here serves eight American presidents. Uh, the actor Forrest Whitaker. Uh, is this? The I like Obama? Forrest Whitaker, dude. He good. You he, like him? Yeah, he's a good yeah. actor. Yeah. Well, anyway, Forrest Whitaker. Fucking movie, man. It's it's on my on demand. Check that shit out. I don't even know the title yet. I just they say like, black man serves eight presidents. I was like, let's do it. Let's like let's see what this guy's story is. Yeah. And he, he gets slapped because his father. Anyways, his mother gets raped on the plantation, and his father says, "Hey," literally. That's all he says. He says, "Hey," to the white guy that just finished raping his wife, and he gets shot in the head for it. Rather an intense thing. And then the, 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 the little old white lady, right? And I thought, dude, I found myself crying because this little old white lady goes up to this little young man and says, don't worry, I'm going to teach you how to be a house nigger. And I'm like, oh, dude. I was like, dude, like, you're getting a promotion on the day your daddy dies, but nothing about that is good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> 
sitting there. He's like, I can't believe you saved these things. Oh, my God. I, you're getting a promotion on the day your daddy dies, <laughs> but nothing about this is good. <laughs> In comes the flying spaghetti monster. Another 20 lashes. Well, I got two of them stuck on my ass, man. I must be done as fuck, man. <laughs> So that's what I'm saying, right? So he gets the promotion, and he, dude, he becomes the best house sticker out there, dude. He is serving people in the White House, telling me like he don't know his job, right? And like, and we're talking like prominent presidents, like Eisenhower, Nixon. Well, he's not that prominent. I was not a crook. <laughs> yeah, he was pretty prominent. No, I was like, <laughs> you're not a crook. You're just a racist. It's all good, though. I, you know what? Here's the funny part. I think the black people forgave him before the white people did. <laughs> yeah, but who's going to forgive you? God, that's why he's there. <laughs> oh, man. I, I'm certain if we have any African-American subscribers, they are gone at this point. <laughs> oh, dude, what they are. They... Oh, wait, my wait, God. wait. Get back here. Get back here. You're going to put your eyeballs there. You best be looking. Oh my god. <laughs> Lucid's got his face on the camera and Connor just lifted up his sweatshirt showing off his nipple. My boobies. <laughs> Your boobies? boobies? Yeah, considering we're not recording the visual, we're just recording the audio just for the fuck of it. This has been broadcasted for the visually impaired. Yeah. I can say that because my mom's blind. Just like you guys can say it it's got black friends. <laughs> I do have black friends, and they're probably going to be like listening to this going, Tim, man, what the fuck is wrong with you? Are you still beating? Who's beating what off? <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Like, well, who's beating what? Uh, too much pressure. All, all I remember is that you lifted your shirt while I was watching, and then you said, are you still beating it? <laughs> Okay, so your buddy with the you already that, stored yours. Huh, still talking to his girlfriend. I think yeah. his ass. Speaking of girlfriend, I gotta go check on mine. My wife, rather. I'll be right back. Yeah. Go get some. I ain't getting something. I'm just checking on it. I ain't getting shit. What do you guys think I'm in front of the goddamn camera? Hey, you said beating something. <laughs> See you in a minute, man. Okay, Connor, touch yeah. base real quick. Um, that guy that we spoke with the other the other night, the uh, our street, street soldier. soldier. Yeah, our street soldier. Mm -hmm. uh, is he confirmed to come on the show for Saturday? Uh, he hasn't talked to me yet. I can ask him. Give me a second. Yeah, talk to him. I'm gonna pull up some messages. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fuck up his cell phone. This is gonna be awesome. This is why they hate me, right? They talk to me for 10 seconds, and then I blow up their cell phones. They're like, this guy right here, man, he just won't fucking leave me alone. <laughs> Yo. Give me a few seconds. I just gotta go find my lighter. I'll be right back. I got one. Yeah. See, the moment you can light my smoke through a computer, we have a technological innovation that people have never heard of. <laughs> hey, that's not true. Yeah, I'll be right back.
Damn, you a loud ass motherfucker coming back. Give me a few seconds, I'm just gonna bring a cell phone charger. Alright. Take out. No, he's still here. Flubba Geneva. Flubba Geneva? How would it be, Wow. A vinegar both. What? Well, since we're waiting on Connor, what do you got to say? Uh, Stop spelled backwards is pots. Is that what you want? Is that what you want? Okay. So dirty. Good thing I can edit this in post. Uh. You're so dirty. Talk dirty to me. You're so dirty. Oh, you know I am. Don't threaten me with a good time. You silly goose. Uh, rah, rah, rah. <laughs> Man, we, we need to figure out how to get this shit on video. So we're, we're doing the live stream on Thursday, right? Oh yeah, no, I'll be in on that. What? Oh, oh, this is the bullshit part, though. It's the time zones. What time is it at your place right now? Um, it's it, five thirty here. Yeah. It's nine twenty-four here, p.m. Damn. Okay, so eight p.m. my time. Eight p.m. your time. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So midnight Thursday. Yeah. For me. For me. Okay, we can do that. Or, or we could do it earlier if you would like to. I mean, if, if it... I, I'm at my drunkest at midnight. <laughs> That's when you want me. That's when you want my opinion. Uh -huh. the, drunken, the drunken Canadian opinion. Well... Because I, I just say shit. That's all it is. Freedom of speech, motherfucker. Apparently both countries have it. We should start using it. <laughs> Well, so Actually, they're working on getting rid of ours. I don't know if you know this, but we are no longer allowed to pick it in front of the White House. That's old news. Is there a clock tower near the White House? Uh, I don't think so. I, I wouldn't imagine, so it's the goddamn White House. If there's a clock tower beside the White House, they need to demolish that shit. <laughs> right, because it's a public <laughs> forum at that point. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, just, it's an assassination. It's assassination point. Right. <laughs> But yeah, no, that's where you guys are going to go, dude. And Buddha, my buddy, he looks at me and he has this ominous fear. Because he doesn't want it to go down like this. And I don't want it to go down like this. And then when we realize that we're probably the only two Canadians that don't want it to go down like this. We have this really sneaky, sneaky suspicion that martial law will be declared. It's going to affect the United States. Now, it's going to go one of two ways, and this is what me and him can't guarantee, because we don't know. Will martial law be declared on the United States of America, or will martial law be declared on the North American Union? Does it matter? It's still going to happen in the North American continent. Yes. And it's going to affect see, both sides either way. His fear is that... Canada is going to close, close the border outright. You guys are martial law, it's your own goddamn fault. We're going to literally sit on the sidelines and watch it happen. And I said, we can't do that. I said, how many Americans are there in that country? How many people? I said, fuck the American president and fuck the American policy. Can we worry about the American people first? Yeah. 
And he's like, dude, he says, what happens if you find out you can't cross the border because you are too American friendly? He says, what? He looked at me, he goes, what are your orders on that day? Because he looked at me, he says, I think those are the orders that need to be implemented now. Like the, the whole Terminator 4, salvation. Yeah. Grab what you have, grab who you know, and do it now. Because if they close those borders, if they put you guys under martial law, because I'll know it. Because it'll say in my news, United States under martial law, and I'll still be going to the goddamn grocery store buying my milk like nothing happened. And on that day, will Canadians care? That's his worry. Huh. And we could, we could flip it just as quick. What happens if Canada goes under martial law? Will Americans care? Will they even see it coming? Canada's under martial law, so what do they do? Con con confine them to their igloos? Like, think about it. Like, the American... Like, you know I live in a house and I got four seasons and I take care of my cat. But the standard American person that is not privileged to that kind of, you know, cultured information, because that's what it is to know about Canada or to know about the United States or know about Morocco or Mexico or Afghanistan is to be a cultured individual. It's yeah. to, to look beyond your own borders. Will Americans care if we're in martial law or will Canadians care if Americans are in martial law? Because that's his worry. Regardless of the country who falls victim to the martial law, do we have enough people on both sides to shake the other side and say, that's not supposed to happen? I thought we won that war. Yeah. That's how fuckered it's getting. That's how some of the Canadians are, because they're afraid. Because we got our fracking issue on this side, right? Yeah. And then we know places like Pennsylvania, man, they already lost their water. They got nothing. The fracking wells, they just ruptured all of the water wells, and it's like in the thousands and thousands of dollars to get fresh water to bathe your children. Fuck your coffee. You got to bathe your children. It costs you two thousand dollars a month in water fees. We don't we don't think of it. You know, glass of water, a tub of water, a shower, the pot to boil the eggs. We use a lot of water, and it's in the thousands. Why do you guys think Nestle is petitioning, stating that water is not a human right? Or no, sorry, I have to I have to reiterate. I have to do a retraction on this one. It's not that they say that water is not a human right. I have to make sure that this is said appropriately. Nestle has outright stated that access to clean water is not a human right. That's access bullshit. To water, I'm sorry, but that's bullshit. I'm not yeah. buying their chocolate no more. Yeah, uh, access to water is a human right. So you can go to you know the lake beside the nuclear reactor. You're good. There's water there. But access to clean water, they're petitioning to indicate that it's not a human right. Yeah. So, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, but um, last I checked, we were made of, what, 68% water? And, uh, you know, we uh, need clean water to sustain our, you know, our 68% water in our bodies. I mean, we could, yeah, we could drink muddy water. We could drink, you know, chlorinated water or, you know, dirty water or whatever. But we can get by on a lot. Look at the little Ethiopian <clears throat> kids. We can get by on some dirty ass water. Well, I'm just saying, like, the, the thing of it is, is that, you know, for them to say that we're not, it's not a human right to have clean water is like saying, is like saying it's not a human right to have, you know, clean air if we choose. It, it's required well, to live. Me, they air, water, the air, they would. air, water, and and you know, sunlight are all things that humans need to live and survive. But, you know, aside from food, I'm just saying, like, you know, every living <clears throat> thing on the face of the planet requires water to live. Everything. Time out, Lucid. You're a rather, rather musical person, regardless of the genre. You can appreciate music where it's at. Absolutely. Uh, do you uh, enjoy your fair share of hip hop from time to time? I do. Tin Man, YouTube it. Rich Man's World, Immortal Technique. Rich I've heard Man's it. World. You've heard it? Yes, I have. Well, put it on in the background anyway, just for fun. Just put it below. 
but he says it in the last mm. lyrics. We've controlled, since, since you were born, we've controlled what you watch and you read, and pretty soon we're going to control the fucking air that you breathe. Yeah. That's some scary shit. Yeah. Well, we're going to finish up this freaking recording broadcast because we're nearly at an hour. 9-11 was an inside job. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> but we're going to continue this conversation on... The on September 11th at 8:30 or 8 8 p.m. Pacific. Standard. So we're gonna adjourn these proceedings. Meeting adjourned until September 11th. How fucking eerie is that? It yeah. is. We are some. I think. I think the terrorists were doing that before that. Meeting adjourned. I'll meet you all here on September 11th. Some of you will be in planes, but don't worry about it. <laughs> but don't. Yeah, don't worry. Your families will be taken care of. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> Free is the purple spaghetti monster. Free, free flat bread for everybody on that day. <laughs> flat bread, leaven bread. Hey, <laughs> we, bread. we already agreed that it was going to be breadsticks up to people's asses. As long, dude, what, I don't know about you, but I'm a big advocate of fucking garlic butter, dude. I'm not taking that <laughs> shit dry. <laughs> garlic butter and breadsticks right up the government's ass. We could do that. Hey, you, you're, you're a wanna... after you After you put... A sandpaper condom on a dildo and fuck them in the ass first, so that way the salt burns them. Oh, dude, that is so a shitty idea. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we should just do it because it sounds right. It's sandpaper condom. I wonder if that was even created yet. <laughs> just fuck them in the ass with a cactus and suck them in the balls with a. I, I could just imagine what what your girl is saying right now. Money to be made, man. Sandpaper condoms. Sell them to the 1%. <laughs> it's all right. They're always fucking each other in the ass of the Bohemian Grove. It's not like women are going to get hurt in the ball, in the middle of this. Right? <laughs> and, then, and then they could just use rubbing alcohol to clean themselves. <laughs> ah, no, you got you to gotta, you gotta get a good, sanitized, clean. It's got to be iodine. Yeah, oh. but I, iodine don't burn. Oh, that shit. Bullshit! Hurts, Dude, I put iodine on, on my cuts sometimes, dude. It don't burn at all. They put rubbing alcohol on the shit, dude. The shit burns for like 20 minutes. Yeah, tell that to the guy that I cut like 2,000 times and pour... Uh, anyway, he paid his bill. <laughs> well, that's important. He paid his he bill. Poured, <laughs> he paid his debt. <laughs> and, he, and he's still breathing today. <laughs> Here I am scratching my start. head with a knife. I am such a dork. Dude, you're right up there with the... You ever, you ever watch fucking... What's it called? They're all in the... No, it's not all in the family. Family Matters. What is, you know, anyway. You're like the cop scratching his head with a gun. That shit's bound to go off. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, no. Dude, okay. dude, that's Hollywood in the 50s. <laughs> yeah, sand, sandpaper condoms. Turn it inside out for your pleasure. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Just, yeah, turn it inside out when you feel like you've done something wrong. Mm -hmm. oh. forget, forget repenting. Just put the condom on backwards. It's all good. You'll pay for your sins. Right. <laughs> Jesus Christ, where do we come up with this shit? <laughs> we, we don't. We just talk. Sand, <laughs> sandpaper condoms, the N-word. Well, you can't say nigga? <laughs> we have done... We, I know the light's on. We have gone... Fuck, we have covered but. every fucking... Ta taboo here. Oh, the only thing nope. we have left out nope. is go kill the 13 families. That's all nope. we've left nope. out. Nope. Well, now you nope. just voiced it. Oh, I said it. We're done. <laughs> see, see, we didn't say spick. Oh, fuck. I just went there. <laughs> hey, this no, is not a sprinkler it's system. It's not chink, 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 spick, nigga, 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 nigga. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. So we got to do it. You know, we got to start calling them out. Like, you can't be ignorant about it, right? You can't just look at everybody that's got yellow complexion and call them a chink, man. Because sometimes, yeah. you know, they're from different countries. You call them gooks and chinks. And how many racial slurs have we missed so far? Just send them to me. I'll say Pan face, zipper head. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay, so now that we've got all you with racial dental floss. slurs. <laughs> oh, right? So now that we got all the racial slurs out of the way, right? A million dollars for the first man that brings me any one of them that doesn't bleed red. Right. You know and just, what I mean? It's that's I, how I easy do. It is. I do have one more racial thing to say. Panda bears are black, white, and Chinese. And they got over it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, 
Dude, they, you know, and you know what they're doing? They got it that much smart, man. The black, white, Chinese sit back getting high eating eucalyptus. They got it all figured out. <laughs> <laughs> and, and considering or white ear, fucking crackers. <laughs> oh Wait, yeah, Pat the Patrick, crackers. you're Mexican. You gotta say you got you got you got to be racist to the white guy here, so that so that it's fair. Yeah, yeah, you got you got to call me a cracker, Lucid. You saltine. <laughs> you saltine, you. <laughs> saltine. Oh, he, he he brought it up a notch. Right? Yeah, yeah. See, so you're you're a saltine. I guess I would be considered a Ritz because I'm a little darker. <laughs> <laughs> And this is how we fuck with people. See, we we're not racist. We hate everybody equally. That's right. Dude, I got a color TV. <laughs> <laughs> In HD to boot. I don't even know what races start with H and D. Like, but see, the point is... Hindu. <laughs> Hindu. Oh, oh, Hindu. No, that's, a, that's one race. What do we call the people from Dubai? Doobies? <laughs> 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 Can this even go on the air? Can this go you're live? The, you're the censor, not me. I just speak. You're huh? the one that says enter. Then we then we, we figure out what YouTube says later. <laughs> Can we wonder, get away with this? They no. wonder why we get banned. No, but we'll probably put it up anyway. <laughs> oh, it's so fun. It's like are we we're showing that it's it's too late, man. We're too far gone. Who wrote this shit? <laughs> Who writes this script anyway? <laughs> oh, dude. But no, like, seriously, like, I don't know if you've already ended the recording, but... No, we're going to end it right now. Go ahead. Okay, for those of you who are listening, this is us having entirely too much fun trying to illustrate that we are not racist by the least, least little bit. Dude, I got court documents, man. I could show that shit. I was brought before court, and I condone vile acts of racist violence. That is apparently me, right? So like, I just, I read that shit and I was like, really? Well, I get, I get the fact that I'm not, you know, well in the head, the bipolar, that shit fucking works out perfect. Condoned vile act of violent racism. I was like, ouch, that actually hurt me. Words legitimately hurt me because yeah. they called me a racist. We are not racist. Black, blue, yellow, purple. Even if you're flying with a colander of spaghetti, you're welcome. Yeah. We love Dude, everybody. We love everybody. We don't care what color you are, what religion you are. You're a fucking human being. If you bleed red and not green shit, you're cool with me. Exactly. And you know what? I think we should do that someday. Maybe New Year's Eve the, at midnight. You know, midnight your time. We'll all poke each other with a fucking needle. Everybody use their own needle. Let's not be idiots about it. And then fucking put the blood on the Constitution and in Canada, the Canadian chart. I am not doing heroin. No, no, don't do that shit. That's bad. <laughs> Stay away from the black tar heroin, man. Stay away from the brown acid. <laughs> Tim Floyd said that at a show. They Stay away from the man. white crack. <laughs> the white crack. But the black crack, you're good. Oh, McGee's on, man. We got to cons get, get conspiracy and on and on this. Oh, I know. Ne next time we do this... Let's get him in on this. But for right now, let's call this a day because we've already been going an hour. So until next time, this is Tin Man. Lucid. Connor. And we're out this bitch. And you are the resistance. Sometimes.